welcome to what is part one of who knows how many parts or uh, this will never be seen because it went horribly bad and it didn't work and you know yeah, things go like that but the plan is uh, I'm gonna start off by stripping down this rear end and if you're not familiar with this rear end I'm gonna actually show you you know the different aspects of it because it is different than others and if you're not familiar with the disc brakes and all that at least you get to see it you know if you've never messed with one so I'm gonna start off by tearing this down and um, see if this rear end is gonna be any good or not now this is a 355 rear end now I really wanted a 355 or a lower numerical number ratio for the Mustang um, they're very hard to find uh, it seems almost every Explorer out there has a 373 rear end. You know, it's just, you go through the yard and that's all you see is 373s. But this is a 355 non-locking rear end. I bought this one specifically just to get the short axle from it because I got a good deal on it. You know, just for the short axle. So the rest of it, hey, good. In the future, I plan to buy a 373 with a locking differential. And I will shorten that axle as well. So what I will do is probably set up the 373 to go in the car because it's a locking differential. And if I don't like it, I've got the 355 gears out of here that I can transplant onto the 373 carrier in the other one, which I'm assuming on Ford that you can do that because, you know, like a GM, there's, there's cutoffs. So, you know, uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works. But... I would, I, I'm going to plan on it. I'll shorten this one. This will be the first one. I'll end up shorting two in the long run. So I'll just stop, stop blabbing about that. And uh, if you got any questions of why I'm doing what I'm doing, just just ask. You know, there, there's, there's reasons to all of it. So let me get some tools, get some gloves on, and get started pulling this thing apart before we start cutting it apart. Okay, well, I got you guys in a little closer. And, uh, you know, as... Just so you know, if you're at a yard or something, you want to take this stuff apart. Uh, these are 10s. Those are 13s. Bright caliper bolts are 13s. Lug nuts are 19. The um, the flange for the drive shaft axle is a 12, mil 12 millimeter 12 point. So if you need to pull one of those off of the yard, you need a 12 point and just use a wrench and a hammer or something big and heavy and just break it loose. So that will be a problem at the junkyard if you don't have you know one of those uh, wrenches or sockets so I'm gonna start off by pulling off kinda the loose stuff that's on here and uh, my phone making funny noises and uh, we'll go from there All right, so, you know, yeah, easy stuff. So that's all disconnected at this point. Not actually off, but it is disconnected. And the calipers just, you know, the bolts come out. Now this was kind of a, as you see, it's a little, it's a little beaded up, you know. You can probably see that, um, you know. But this was just kind of a, a one that was already out of a car, put on, you know, pulled out a yard, put on trailers with a bunch of other axles, hauled somewhere else. So that's why I got the deal it did. So it's a little beat up. Okay. But uh, so that means that all these caliper bolts are a little bent. So they're not reusable. And it just pops off just like any other uh, the other caliper. And these pads are almost basically brand new. So somebody basically had the brakes done right before this thing ended up in the yard. And yes, this is from Texas. So yes, there's no rust. And I don't know where the, what that is, where that came from. But this is the way... This is actually kind of dirty for the way a rear end looks at a junkyard. I'll insert a picture of what one looks at like at a junkyard here. Now this big heavy cable here, this is the parking brake cable. It is not an emergency brake. That doesn't exist. They're called parking brakes. Now you will see that you have a cable coming to here and it goes off all the way over here. And it actually goes into where, um, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It actually goes in over here like this. You see this little clip here and this little clip here. And this cable will come up. This is the secondary one. They'll both go up that way. Now, 
you know, a lot of times you'll see some people say that, oh, well, it's just, uh, you know, it only locks up one of the tires. It's like, no, obviously they have no idea what they're talking about. But yes, it does actuate the brake on here and here. And if you notice that that was on the inside, because next we're going to come down and I'm going to pull this rotor off and we'll see what that brake actually looks like. So I will continue on with this and then we'll come back over to that. Okay, well, as you can see, this is still on here, so I don't want to get an impact wrench or anything out. I'm just going to do it this way. And for you guys that are big fans of the old U.S.-made Craftsman, I don't like the old U.S.-made Craftsman. I've had these things forever. I don't like them. They're hard on the hands. These little sharp edges, they hurt your hands. Their wrenches are short. They're not polished. I'm not a fan. I wasn't a fan years ago, and I'm still not now. So you can label me as, as, a, as, a, as a craftsman hater and an idiot, but I just don't like them. I don't like working with them, but I've had them forever, and I still use them. Yes, they were good quality. They were just not nice to use. Let's just put it that way. Hence the hammer. Okay, so let's see if it's oh, actually coming off. Okay, so now if you're not familiar, uh, this version, you know, these cars have a little drum brake in here, and all that is is your parking brake. So you have a drum inside the rotor, you have the rotor here, because in years past they used to do an actual parking brake on the rotor years ago and to be honest gm did a bunch of them and a bunch of other companies did too didn't work wasn't a good idea they got stuck all the time bad idea which is why everybody has gone to this type of system so that's about all i can show you there because we've got to get i'm going to go ahead and pull that remnant of the axle off the drive shaft off and uh, we've got to get the rear end opened and release the schmoo and make it stink really bad in here. So I'm going to get this table turned around first. So I got access because everything's on wheels. Good enough anyway. And not only is my all my tables pretty much on wheels, but you're on wheels now. I got rid of my tripod. I got something a whole lot better. It is the strangest thing I've ever bought from a shopping mall. It's a stick with wheels and something you'd never expect for sale at a shopping mall. And if anybody can guess what it is, you'll win absolutely nothing. So let's take this off. Okay. And uh, just to show you that, yes, I was frustrated just like everybody else and you know you do stupid things like grab the 13 millimeter six point socket and try to put it on a 12 millimeter 12 point bolt you know what happens you strip it out and it doesn't come off either so you do stupid things like that you know what everybody does stupid things so all these guys you see on youtube and it all works perfect for them it's like that ain't real life this is what you do, especially when you're trying to film and you've got annoying things going on. And yeah, so fortunately the wrench still fits, so we're going to find some way to bind this thing into place. And we're going to try this again. Now, this is the whole part of, you know, why she said call it the Infernal Craftsman. So now you understand. So as you notice, a little information here, this is an aluminum drive shaft. This is on certain exploders. I don't know which ones, so don't ask. It's the ones that have the aluminum shaft. That's how you know. They're nice and shiny and pretty. Uh, you guys up north, you know, that it looks like, uh, you know, battleship pipes or cannons or something. You know, it looks like something like that up there. To us, it's nice, shiny, pretty aluminum. But if you have a stock, I, think, I believe it's 6566. I believe, and I don't 
exactly what me on. I think five, six, and maybe seven, eight. That the, this stock aluminum drive shaft is almost exactly the same length as the stock drive shaft that was on the cars. So the, this aluminum exploder shaft will fit certain Mustangs with certain transmissions without any um, you know shortening or anything like that. It just you have to worry about the U joint sizes. I don't remember the details on it. Go do your research. There's lots of information out there on it. So. You know, I will grab another one of these, a full aluminum drive shaft to uh, to use or shorten whatever for mine. So let me turn the camera off and do this without, you know, filming it because that's just not going to go well. Okay, well, that's off. Temper's still there, but it's off. So now this car had uh, ABS so it has a little sensor right here now this sensor plug just pulls straight off they I guess they didn't see any uh, any need for this to be a locking one so figure you know if something got up underneath the car and it just got ripped out of there said, eh, it's okay yeah you don't need ABS it's okay it's okay yeah so at least it's easy to remove if you're working on the car so now what are the other annoyances that we have on, other than charging cords, on uh, these kind of rear end things is the fact that I need to put this in my hand. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take these off just to take them off and get them out of the way because obviously that's garbage. It's a wireless Bluetooth parking brake. So, you know, the, these little clippy deals here. There is a tool for doing this. I don't have one. I've never bought one just never need never really bought one always done the screwdriver trick the other trick is if if you have a real problem with this is you can put a hose clamp take a hose clamp and wrap it around here and then tighten it down right on top of there and it'll push all these little prongs in and then you can just slide that right out so that's one little tip on those so let me get those taken off and then we're going to go around to the back and uh, we're going to stink up the shop by taking the pan off Yeah, one bolt and it's already stinking. This is not meant for this, but this is what I got on. And this is a very old brushed one. This is not a newer one. Tell you though, sure beats doing it under the under the car. I don't miss doing it that way. So let's grab something to pry with and uh, see what happens. Everything's a pry bar. Everything's a hammer. I don't even know if there's any oil in it, to be honest. There is, and it's actually really pretty clean looking. That's uh, surprising. That is not black, nasty oil like I'm used to seeing out of her end. Insert joke here. I doubled up on the tubs just in case this one leaks. 
So that's good to go. Let me put this somewhere it don't drip on everything. Okay, well, it's a good sign that the oil looks decent. So far, so good. Looks good. Smells as bad as gear oil always does. So, uh, let me move the camera again. Now, I have to keep you guys plugged in because this GoPro, I don't care what kind of battery you have in it, this thing just sucks down batteries like it's going out of style. I mean, they just don't last at all. Um, I also find that the GoPro runs cooler if you run it off of that versus the battery because if you don't run it off of the cord, if you if you film in 4K, you get about 10 minutes of filming, just so you know. So we have got to get around to here. Now, this is this is the way that you know the civilized world does rear ends. There's a little bolt here. You pull this out. You push that pin out, you push the axles in, and there's C-clips inside there. Now, I know you're going to say, well, in racing, they use those, uh, you know, the old Ford ones with the bearings out there because they're safer. Well, I've seen just as many, you know, C-clips and, and Ford ones. I've seen Ford ones, the whole thing go through the, ax you know, the, the fender just like a C-clip. I don't, I don't see anything better about the, you know, having the retainer on the outside versus the inside. I really don't. Uh, in fact, my issue is with the, the older Ford ones is a lot of those, it was actually a ball bearing, which was not as strong. It had less friction, but it wasn't as strong. And a ball bearing, once it wears down a little bit, then that thing just buggers off out the side of the car and tears up the car. So it really wasn't any safer than a C-clip, which is obvious because everybody uses C-clips now. So I believe that's probably going to be about an 8 millimeter. so let me go find one. And it is an 8-ish. So, I'm going to, uh, there we go. Now, I don't know on the Fords if it's the same issue on the Fords, but on the GMs, this bolt is extraordinarily soft um, in the regards of you can strip the head out on this thing really easy taking it out. So, that way on on the GMs, anytime I would do a GM, I want a brand new bolt every time it goes together because I don't trust them to be reused because the GM ones were so soft. Okay. And here's that tiny little bolt, tiny little head. And like I said, I don't know about these, but I know on GMs, this bolt is just garbage. Okay, so let's give that little push. And then we're going to turn this guy around here and, and watch it fall out the other way. You stupid. All right, go get the magnet. hate gear oil. All right. There's our little cross penny thing. Yeah, looks pretty good. A little bit of wear. No biggie. Not bad at all. Okay, now to release the 
C-clips, which you guys really can't quite see, I bet. So I'm going to put you as close as I dare to. But right here, let me find something to point with here. Right in here, there is a little clip that you can see both ends of it right there. And then when I push this axle in the end, this will come inwards just a little bit, and then that clip will fall out. That's the plan. So let's see what happens. Oh, it didn't fall out. But as you can see, the clip is still there. So now, I can actually turn that around over to here, grab our magnet, and there's our C-clip. So if you're not, not familiar with C-clips, that's the way that works. So I want to wipe things off as I take them out. And my glove broke again. I... I only paid a couple dollars a case. I'm not complaining. So, for a change, so, let me re-glove and we'll do the other one. All right. Well, at this point, I've got you know the bolted-on stuff stripped off. I've got the axles up, pan off. I let this drip for a couple hours. Actually, I ended up turning up the other way because there's a huge reservoir down in here, so it catches a lot of oil. There is oil still in the axles because of the shape of them. It just oil just sits in there. But for right now, what I'm going to do is put my cover back on, slide the axles, or slide the axles back in, put the cover back on. I'm not going to put the pin or anything. I just want to get them on just to keep dust out. I'm going to put the axles and cover on, and then I'm going to start cutting off all the extraneous pieces that are on here that we don't need. These were the original spring purchase for the Explorer, and then these here were actually for the sway bar. It was on the Explorer as well. So we don't need either one of those. So both of those are going to go. And then um, we got to decide how we want to cut this axle over here. There's methods. You can you can push the tube out. You can pull out the, uh, the little, you know, plug welds of whatever it is they use in there. You can pull that out, push the axle out of there. It's, I mean, it can be done. You pull it out, cut it off, slide it back in. You have no welds on the outside. It, it's, it's a nicer finished product, I think, a little stronger. Not that it really matters. But, you know, that's an option. There is another, a couple other options of, you know, cutting it. Um, I would, uh, the default way is to use a, a uh, you know, a, a, gr uh, a grinder and a cutoff wheel. I don't really want to do it that way. It's, it's harder to get a straight line. You know, you know, unless you spend a whole lot of time using grinders and, and you just do it all the time, you cut really big stuff with the grinder, you know, a little, not so bad, but the bigger it goes, any little off, you wander way off. So that's an option. The other option is, is they have a, um, there's, you know, this cold cut saws. There's uh, some really, really nice ones out there and then there's some cheaper ones. That would be a nice way to go because I could set, rig this up, put the saw up, make my first cut to cut the end off, then slide the saw over make my second cut and you've got two perfect parallel parallel cuts to each other may not be perpendicular to the pipe but each cut will be parallel to each other because the tool was attached to the tube so that's an option if i you know if i end up getting the tool i doubt i'm going to buy one of those but that's an option um i believe their cheapest one is two something it's 200 something dollars um it's probably not going to go that way uh, then there's a couple other ways you can cut it as well, but uh, let me get this back together, start cutting off pieces, and uh, we'll talk about actually cutting that in the next video. Or we'll, we will actually cut that in the next video, what will happen. Not talk about it, we will actually cut it in the next video. So, hope everybody uh, is not too bored because... Everybody does these things. I don't know how many. I, I haven't really watched any videos on it, but I know there's got to be thousands of them out there. So, you know, mine is just another drop in the ocean. Thanks for watching.